What's up, Commanders fans? So I just seen a video from Daryl Green, and he met up with one of the guys that you wouldn't even expect. He met up with Mike Sanders still. And out of all people, I expected, you know, Emmanuel Forbes to be out there and, you know, to be practicing with him, seeing that Emmanuel Forbes had a rough year. And, you know, Daryl Green has called out Emmanuel Forbes, you know, just to help him out. And I just assume that I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I'm just assuming that it didn't. And um, I'm just thinking, like, yo, um, Emmanuel Forbes, he should be out there working with him. And, of course, he probably could have. He just probably didn't record it. But it's just one of those things that needs to be recorded. If you were to go out there and practice with Daryl Green and be learning from him or talking to him, anything, I think you need to record anything you can if you're talking to that man. And hopefully Emmanuel Forbes is practicing with Daryl Green around this time just to see where he could be, you know. Um, just because somebody practiced with the greats don't mean they're going to be great. It, it depends on a lot of things. If you're picking up, if you're understanding, if you're implementing everything Daryl Green talks about, and if he actually cares. So it would be great for Emmanuel Forbes to be learning from him, but it's all about Emmanuel Forbes. Is Emmanuel Forbes going to make time in his busy schedule during this offseason, during their little break before training camp comes up? Is he going to take advantage of that time to really get in that extra practice that he needs? Or does he already think he has enough that he doesn't even need to worry about Daryl Green? Because Mike Sanders still is taking advantage of it. And he just got here this season, and he's already trying to gun for a starting position. And right now it's starting to look like either him or Quan Martin is going to take that starting position, either at slot cornerback or outside cornerback. And, you know, they don't really care where they put Quan Martin because he's, he's been doing great, especially his first season with two interceptions. And him just surpassing Emmanuel Forbes throughout the year. And, of course, let me put it this way. If Emmanuel Forbes and Quan Martin were to switch and Quan Martin was to start that entire season, I don't know if he may have did better than Emmanuel Forbes. But – I can tell you this, just by him taking the back, the the backstage, him being a second round pick, just like Mike Sanders still being a second round pick, by them being a second round pick and not a first round pick, a lot of pressure is not on them. So that's one thing that we do have to be aware of. If Emmanuel Forbes was a second round pick and Quan Martin was a first round pick, maybe things would be different. But because of the situation and the way things are, and the pressure that you get with being a first-round draft pick, they expect you to start right away. They expect you to go out there and show your your best talent. Whereas Quan Martin had a chance to, you know, relax and not really focus on one position. He was everywhere. They Wherever they needed him last season is where they had him. So he played slot. He played – he played in the backfield. He played safety. Like, he played a lot of positions to where we wouldn't be too mad at him if he didn't perform as well because he was responsible for so much. But now that we have a guy like Jeremy Chin right there, and then we also have Defoe right there that everybody forgets about, and to have those two solid people right there, it's only making me think that, Quan Martin is probably going to be a sub for either one of them or he's going to be a starter at a cornerback position. And these are my these are my people that I feel will be a starter just in the group that we have. You have you have um Quan Martin I I feel like as a runner up for the slot position, the the slot cornerback position. And just because Mike Sanders still was handpicked by the new regime that we have right now, Adam Peters and Dan Quinn, those guys handpicked him. I feel like Mike Sanders still has a better shot at starting in the slot position than anybody else, either even over Emmanuel Forbes or Quan Martin. But 
for the outside, for the cornerback positions, I feel like because of the experience and the fact that M- Michael Davis was also handpicked by them, he has a better position at being, you know, a starter. And, of course, we got to see how training camp comes and works out. But right now, I think those guys picking just by them, by this new regime picking off of body type, play style, and just availability, I think Michael Davis, uh, him being so um, familiar with playing in the league for a very long time and playing at a nice level, you know, a high level. I think he's a great player to have. And um, it all depends if they feel like he's picking up on their play style, their uh, technique, their scheme. If he fits and he's doing everything well in training camp, then I feel like he's going to get that slot. And, of course, that goes with everybody. But right now, I feel like Michael Davis is a starter on the outside at cornerback. And then Benjamin St. Juice, because he fits that body type that Dan Quinn likes and he goes for. So it all depends on how they all play out because this is the a crucial moment in picking your starter for the upcoming season. So I'm just proud of Mike Sanders still because he's gunning for it. He's learning from a great, uh, a, a Hall of Fame cornerback. And not just any cornerback, a cornerback who played – from when he was 23 all the way until he was 42. And he played in his late 40s and still was putting up numbers. Like, he, uh, th- what, when he was 39, he had three interceptions? And you don't hear that often that players play that long. But this was back in the day where a lot of players was playing that long. And in his later days, he had 15 pass breakups. And he, I think in that same season, he had two interceptions so it's just it just shows that back then it was way different and for him to still be out there at 60 something I believe he's 60 something still getting it still moving still active you don't see that often so what that tells me is he eats right he works right he trains his body right and I think a lot of people need to know that and let's let's not overthink Daryl Green. Daryl Green is great. He's been to the Super Bowl. I mean, he's been to the Super Bowl twice, won it, and he's been to the Pro Bowl seven times. And you have a lot to learn from him. I think I would be at his house every single day learning if I was Emmanuel Forbes. And I just think his body type, he's not super duper stocky. He wasn't super duper stocky. Of course, they had big shoulder pads, but he wasn't this big 230 pound player, 220, 210. He wasn't that heavy. So I just think that is a perfect person that Emmanuel Forbes can learn from, seeing that Emmanuel Forbes is fast. And and Daryl Green in his time was fast. And it wasn't just about speed for Daryl Green. It was about pursuit about getting there, about timing, about angle, about just understanding certain coverages and attacking it. So I think he has a lot to learn from Daryl Green, and he just needs to go out there and learn it. And please, if you do learn something from him, just show everybody. Of course, players like to work in silence sometimes. But for this, I think this is one of those things where Emmanuel Forbes has to show people what he's working on and not just work behind the scenes of course i get it there's nothing wrong with working when nobody's looking and not showing people too much but just because people doubt doubt his weight and his skill i think he needs to go out there and just show people hey look i'm learning from daryl green just put out the same video same type of video that mike sanders still was looking was doing and just to show that He's working for it, and he wants it. Just show us something. I don't think we got anything besides OTAs. And the only people that's been sticking out to me and what I've been seeing and what even um, Fred Smoot and Santana Santana Moss have been talking about 
have been Quan Martin, Mike Sanders still. We've been hearing a lot about those guys, and they just got here. And these are second-round picks. Can we hear something about our first-round draft pick from last year, Emmanuel Forbes? Can we hear something? Can we see you do something? We need to see you working. We need a workout video, something, just to show people that you're putting in that work and people can stop talking trash about you. Of course, right now is the time to be working, putting your head down. But we need something from our first-round draft pick. We need something bad. And, of course, it doesn't prove everything. It doesn't prove much, but it proves something. It proves that you're working and you're learning from somebody. And we need that. We can't just, you know, just see and just hear about it through uh, Zach Zelby when he puts out the news articles. We can't just hear that. We need to see it. We need to see a little something. Just see you working, sweat, no homo, no ditty. We just need to see you do something. So I'm excited for this season. I just think a lot of pressure is still on Emmanuel Forbes, obviously, but he could possibly lose that starting position because Mike Sanders still and Quan Martin, they want it. They want that position. They don't care which position they get as long as they get a starting role. And the way it's looking, Quan Martin with these behind-the-back interceptions, and then as he gets the interception, he's trying to keep his feet in bounds. So it's showing a lot. And then the fact that Mike Sanders still used to be a wide receiver. Of course, Emmanuel Forbes used to be a wide receiver too back in the day. But Mike Sanders still is more versed in everything else. Forced fumbles, touchdowns, interceptions, pass breakups. He's He's been in the, in the college realm for a very long time. He's allowed himself to develop before he decided to enter the NFL. So that could be one of the reasons why he's more, he's looking more, um, what's the word? He's looking better than Emmanuel Forbes. But Emmanuel Forbes has to, he has to kick it up to another notch. If he wants to remain a starter or earn that starting position again, because he had it at the beginning of last season, but he lost it. And, of course, he was a rookie. So, you know, a lot is completely different than it was in college. But it's just now he has a new regime. He got new people behind him. He got a new staff. He has one of the best defensive coaches in the league. And then I'm I'm talking about Dan Quinn. And then he also has – his partner, who is um, – he got Ken Norton, who um, is great back there. And, he, of course, he's working with the linebackers, but he also is great. And then um, you also got um, the, uh, his right-hand man, Dan Quinn's right-hand man, Whit Jr. So there is a lot that is in the favor of Emmanuel Forbes this season – And they're not pushing him to be a starter, but they're working with him. And right now it's starting to seem like, I don't know, but it's starting to seem like he's not going to be there because of the fact that they already have him playing at the kickoff return. And, of course, they've been trying to work out Jahan Dawson there too, but sometimes when you get pushed to special teams, that means – that they don't want you to be a starter anymore or they don't want to see you at that position anymore as a cornerback or wide receiver, running back, whatever position you had prior. Once you get to that special teams, it means they're they're getting ready to kick you to the the curb. And we seen that last season with Antonio Gibson where he was fumbling and they took him from the starting, starting running back role two special teams and he started to earn his position back again where we seen last season he was doing great and the season prior to that he was doing he was on special teams as well but of course you know he can do more than one one thing but once you get on that special teams it's kind of like it's like you on your way out so I'm excited for this training camp coming up and All I know is Emmanuel Forbes got to take it to another year because everybody around him 
is trying to get that role. And I haven't heard really much great things about him because Joe Witt Jr. was talking about him and, you know, the reporter asked him about Emmanuel Forbes and he didn't have much to say. But as soon as he asked him about Frankie Louvu and he lit up, Joe Witt Jr. lit up. So what is that telling you? That he feels much better about um, Frankie Louvu and his play style and he loves what he brings to the team versus Emmanuel Forbes. And, of course, once again, Frankie Louvu was handpicked. He was brought here. And Emmanuel Forbes was already here. This is not somebody they went out and drafted. This is not somebody they caught in free agency this was somebody that was here already and we're just trying to see what we can do with them and if I don't see Joe Witt Jr. lighting up and then I see Emmanuel Forbes going to special teams what is that telling you I appreciate y'all for hanging on to this video let me know how y'all feel and definitely subscribe to the channel send this to somebody that you think will enjoy watching it and uh I'm out